The directive, and in most cases its transposition into member state law, has left a lot of room for the formats that non-financial information can be disclosed in. As a result, a wide variety of different reports has developed. Many companies even published several reports with different aims and addressed towards different audiences. We have come to refer to this as cascaded reporting. This is because the quantity and quality of information varies greatly between these formats and they are often interlinked. This overview and the terms used are what we have found to be the highest common factor. Integrated reports connect financial and non-financial information in their function as annual reports they are legally binding. By connecting the different types of information they create new context Integrated reports thus have a higher informational value than just the sum of the two types of information. Integrated reporting is not to be confused with combined reporting, though. In combined reports, non-financial statements are issued as part of the annual report, but in a separate section without connecting the two types of information. Non-financial statements are legally binding and usually only cover the core requirements from the EU directive. Companies use them to be on the safe side by reporting the minimum, making it easier to be provided with assurance. Companies that publish non-financial statements a lot of times also issue more elaborate documents containing detailed non-financial information on a broad range of topics. These are, for example, called either corporate social responsibility or corporate responsibility or sustainability reports. In our opinion, the references in the non-financial statements to these other reports are somewhat of a legal grey zone. On the one hand, these reports are not considered as part of the legal obligation of non-financial information reporting. On the other hand, they are needed to understand how and what is reported in a non-financial statement. It is often unclear to what extent these CR or CSR or sustainability reports are legal binding, therefore. However, many of them make a claim to be prepared in compliance with the reporting framework and thus are required to fulfill at least these standards. It can also be argued that these reports are especially directed towards ranking agencies whose analyses are relevant for sustainable finance indices and therefore the reports have to be considered information that is theoretically able to affect stock listings. The weakest level of non-financial reporting in terms of quality is carried out in so-called CR, CSR or sustainability brochures. These brochures are usually marketing tools that do not follow any standard and are subject to creative freedom. These brochures are not relevant for non-financial information analysis. Directive EU 2014-95 lists a number of reporting frameworks which can be used for non-financial information reporting. In addition to this, some national reporting frameworks may be mentioned in the national implementation laws. In this list of reporting frameworks, a wide variety of approaches can be found. Without going too much into detail, the most important differences should be pointed out with the following examples. The EMAS Eco-management and auditing scheme, for example, is a topic-specific reporting framework focusing on ecological aspects and would therefore not be sufficient to cover all aspects of non-financial information reporting required by the directive. Still, it has a high reputation and is widespread in its use among companies. The UNGC, United Nations Global Compact, is based on 10 broadly formulated principles, which are mostly kept at an abstract level. Companies, therefore, are very free in choosing how and what to report under this reporting framework and have to develop their own practice. The GRI, on the other hand, is a multi-stakeholder initiative and provides a comprehensive and detailed methodology for non-financial information reporting. This is an important difference when comparing it to other reporting frameworks that have been set up, for example, solely by the business side. As one stakeholder group in GRI, trade unions are pre represented by the Trade Union Advisory Committee TUAC and therefore actively involved in further developing GRI through its technical bodies. GRI covers a broad range of governance, economic, ecologic and social topics and provides links to the sustainable development goals and therefore by providing a broader sustainability context connects to a political agenda. 
At the same time, the consideration of existing operating standards and specific indicators combined with a precise formulation of requirements leads to a more uniform non-financial information reporting and thus yields a better comparability. As a number of studies has shown, GRI is the most widely used reporting framework in Europe. These reasons have led to the decision in the drafting of the curriculum for the further education of non-financial analysts, short SINOFIA, to focus on GRI when going into the details of analysis.